exciting things today. First, we are going to the construction office and we're going to pay for and pick up our demo permit, which is super exciting. We actually submitted the permit a few weeks ago, knowing that we were obviously gonna do this. And then two, I'm running to the bank to cash one of our private lender checks. So we're using two private lenders to fund this renovation and we'll be paying them back after we do the cash out refinance. The first lender came through with uh, their portion of the funds and I'm going to cash it so we can pay the deposit for our contractor. <laughs> What's up, Kai Kai? Hi, baby. How you doing? I just got home. Oh, I just pulled out. I'm picking up the um, demo permit. Oh, shit. Good job. Yeah. All right, I'll see you at home. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. got the demo permit and also they just let us know that they now have a whole online portal where you can schedule your inspections check your inspection results view permit updates I love when people come into the 21st century and have stuff online so this is awesome I'm very excited about that all right now we get to go cash private lender check deposited the private lender check and now I'm gonna do something very exciting which is put the demo permit in the window. Demo permit in the window. Let the renovations begin. So with all of the old tenants personal property removed the house is now empty and the next step is the contractor that we select is going to come in and completely do the demo. Before they do that though we have to give them a deposit. And I'm just feeling a little like, ah, because we've never paid someone so much money before. But I'm very excited. I know this is how it works. But before we got here, we did go back and forth on an itemized scope of work that was very detailed. Who's providing what? Who's doing what? What's the time frame? And then we also had our lawyer draft up a contract that writes everything out. Um, we all signed it. We all reviewed it. And because I know we're doing things properly in the beginning and setting a good foundational relationship that's professional and we're getting all of our ducks in a row, I feel more comfortable obviously paying the deposit. So don't ever give a deposit without a contract, guys. So here we go. So he sent a quick books invoice. I'm going to review and pay. You saw yesterday we deposited the private lenders first round of funding. It cleared today, and so now we're paying it. Ugh. All right, we're doing a bank transfer. I'm gonna press pay. Do I press it? Press it. Da! Ah, I pressed it. Throw it away. All right, download receipt. Yes, I want that receipt, please. So one of the reasons that we really like this contractor is he's very professional. Everything has been communicated through documentation, like emails, contracts. Um, we didn't just do verbal agreements. Everything we spoke about, I would then follow up in an email and, and recap it. And the Payments are taking place through QuickBooks online, which is a secure and, and trusted resource. You know, we're not just doing cash. Don't do cash. We're not just doing personal checks. This is like very scared away. Since this is our first time doing a complete renovation, hiring everything out, I'm trying to be like just very buttoned up, very organized, covering our assets all the way through. <laughs> And the contract that we're using can actually be found in Landlord Law School. So the lawyer that we use also has a online course for how to cover your assets and be proactive with protecting yourself, not just reactive. So if you guys are interested in learning more about protecting yourself or you just want the template, she has a 
whole boatload of a lot of other templates that we definitely utilize. Um, check out Landlord Law School. I actually have a link in the description below. It's been great so far. And hold up, we're not done yet. You don't just pay, get the receipt, and leave it in your downloads folder. No, no. You're going to be organized and you're gonna put it away. So I use Dropbox. So basically I go to my Dropbox and I have everything in here. I got a folder for YouTube. I got a folder for Rental Swealth. I got a folder for the cookbook we're working on, all the good stuff. So I go to my real estate folder and I have things organized and I go to properties under management. And then I go to the property that we're talking about, construction, and then I have a receipts folder. And then I put all the receipts in here. And being organized will help you in the long run for so many reasons. Um, obviously bookkeeping and then also just referring back in the future. We're like, oh, let's, what was that quote? You know exactly where it is. There's a whole other thing I could also do on this. Uh, bookkeeping, we use Stessa. I could link to that below as well. So any transactions that we make using our um, checking accounts or our credit cards that are associated to our real estate ventures automatically sync with Stessa, so it's super, super awesome. So now we're organized and demo can start. Guys, I am being serenaded by the most beautiful sound. I don't think you could hear it, but right behind this wall is a whole lot of banging and sounds of work happening. Demo started today and do you, you see this? There, there's no plaster in this hair. Do you, do you see this? I'm not covered in laugh and old home debris. I could get used to this. Let's go see what they're doing. Holy sh I just heard Kyle pull into the driveway and I'm so excited for him to see next door. So let's go greet him. You ready to see next door? Look at me right now. I don't have a speck of plaster dust on me and so much got done today. Let's oh. go check it out. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Dude, look how tall the ceilings look. It smells better in here already. As they were demoing in the kitchen, they would find like a bottle of soap and they would just open it up and just like throw Smart. it. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, God. it looks so good. Wow. I feel like the ceilings look so tall. They do. I wanted to check this out. Yeah. Yep, that's it right there. Yeah. So, we didn't have any lights in our living room, which is this room just on our side. And uh, I had a problem with that breaker the actual breaker went bad, so I had to replace the breaker. And we went to go watch TV last night, we had no power. So I saw the breaker was tripped, so I keep trying to turn it on, and it just keeps tripping. So I was like, oh, the breaker's bad again. But then, we pull our entertainment center away, and we see a big bust out on our side. So I think that probably like, one of them stuck a crowbar. They got a little like excited. A bar, like through the wall, and it looks like they actually nicked this wire right here. That's what happens. It's an accident, no, no big deal. We'll fix it. Um, but this is like unbelievable to me. This is awesome. I was like, oh, can I come inside or whatever and see like what you guys are up to? And they're like, oh, it's, it's a mess in there. You're gonna definitely wanna put a mask on. I was like, oh, we, we did this. <laughs> like, we just did this like four months ago. Six nah, months bro, ago. We, we good. Yeah. We already got uh, a we, lifetime's worth of say this when we are walking through but there is a lot of knob and tube in this place and we're replacing all of it we're extricating the old knob and tube and running new wires i know some of you were like eighty thousand. that sounds like a lot we didn't mention a few things we're adding central air we're doing new electric so a lot of other updates are happening within that eighty thousand. so if you see knob and tube like when you're walking a potential property it's not like a huge deal breaker to begin with okay you definitely want to get it extricated for two reasons, okay? You're not gonna be able to insulate the property with knob and tube. Once you insulate knob and tube wiring, it now becomes a code violation. Knob and tube wiring in itself is not a code violation, but you're gonna have problems finding a company to insure a house 
that you have knowledge of there being knob and tube um, without having the intention of replacing it. And this wall is coming down, right? This whole wall. This whole wall is coming down. Yeah, this whole wall is coming down. This that header up there is coming down. Yeah. And we're gonna keep that closet that's on the other side of that wall, so that's gonna stay. But it'll yeah, it'll be nice and open. And then we're gonna basically do the same thing we did on our side, Lark. Is gonna be Yeah. That is going to come back. One. One. Because it, it's narrower. This room yeah. is narrower. Yeah, it's a little narrower. So yeah, back one, but this will all be gone here. This header will be gone, and it'll just be this little partition wall because then it'll go right into this room. And then remember, we're getting rid of this front door, and that's going to become a window. And this door over here is going to be acting as our front door. So it's going to look super freaking nice. So excited. These floors aren't that horrible. They're not. Like, um... Actually, her side seems to be a lot more level. Yeah. Like it doesn't seem to be as out of whack as our, our side is. But like I know we were really concerned about maybe having to pull up the subfloor because it being so cat yeah. stained and like I don't really s see that being an issue. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, which is nice because as you guys know, the price of plywood right now is like insane. So if we could save and not have to do a new subfloor. So that's it for today with demo. They're going to be back tomorrow. They're going to continue demoing. And it did say it's probably going to take them an extra day. I think they have, that was today was one. I think it's going to take them like three or four days to finish. But look how clean we are. Leave in the comments. I'm super curious because I don't oh, even yeah. know myself. How many dumpsters do you think it's going to take to demo the first and second floor mm -hmm. of next door? And if you want to um, throw out how much you think it's going to cost, because what I'm really excited to do with this little series, this renovation, yeah. is that because our unit and that unit is almost identical, to compare costs, how much we saved mm -hmm. from DIYing. So you guys know we did the demo. How much do you think it's costing us to demo next door? And we're using the same finishes. So we yeah. are comparing apples to apples material-wise. It's going to be interesting. I'm very interested. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, buddy. This whole floor and the second floor have gotten gutted down to the studs. So I just got done walking the property with our contractor and we went over just some layout changes that we're doing. Um, this, this feed is gonna move over two bays so that we got that nice open concept into the kitchen. Um, opening up a couple little spaces down here, but for the most part down here, the way it's looking right now is basically how it's gonna be laid out. Kitchen, dining room, TV room. But the fact that we didn't have to touch this is like, is awesome. And did you guys talk about the subfloor at all? Like, remember we were gonna make a game time decision if it was gonna have to come up? Yeah, so the smell, like the smell in here is like actually a lot better. The only spots that it's still pretty bad is where there is still some existing old floor. So once we get this Luan up and that Luan and laminate up back there, we'll make a decision kind of. I don't see any like really heavily soiled areas though. Like you'll know, cause you'll see big dark and a lot of the carpet pad will be stuck to it. Like there is some sticking here, but this doesn't look like this is like an area that was, that was a problem area. So, I mean, obviously that's a huge benefit for us. If we don't have to cut out pieces of subfloor and be replacing with three quarter plywood, that's massive savings. We thought we may have a large area of heavily soiled that we had to cut out and it doesn't look like right now we're, we are going to have to. On top of also walking through talking about layout, the electrician came today and he didn't see any major issues. He was pretty like, yeah, this is, this is easy. This is going to be easy because we did gut down to the studs. Um, he's going to have no problem doing a service update and then pull a new wire for receptacles and switches. Next step's gonna be, he's gonna get the whole layout done kind of in his head, how everything's gonna be ran. He's gonna do some drawings. He'll stamp those drawings and then we'll fill out the, we'll fill out the permit and get that handed in and wait for approval. And then we'll get started. A couple little things, cause the HVAC guy is coming to do a walkthrough Monday that we're gonna be changing. Like these two feeds are gonna get rerouted. But for the most part, the biggest issue that we're gonna have is same problem we have in our unit is to get cool air and hot air up to the third floor. 
So we're gonna, once we talk about some troubleshooting options, uh, we'll get back to you with it. But um, I'm curious to see what his thoughts are because we definitely had that issue on our side. But I see that they did a bunch of work upstairs, so let's go check it out. I'd say. So they didn't get started on the bathroom yet, but for the most part, the bedrooms look like they're all demoed out. Whoa, you can see the other bedroom. It's crazy that like, no, you can't lift the tool. I touched the hammer. <laughs> no, come on. But, oh, you can see outside right there. Oh no, that's the bathroom, and then there's a window after it. I was like, that's good, there's like an exterior. But, um, what's, what's so crazy is that like, how long realistically, and I know we didn't do it super streamlined, how long did it take us to demo the first floor in the bathroom? Oh man. Like two I, months? <laughs> yeah, I'd say at least three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Four days, they're gonna have demoed everything. This is, they just picked up and dropped off a dumpster. This is the second one for the demo, third dumpster of the project. Cause they already had one from yeah, the, the clean out. Oh yeah. It's crazy where randomly they'll have some insulation. Like oh, okay. they obviously Did pulled this wall down at some point. And that's that's newer wiring, so they definitely did some. That's what's really cool to kind of like see the phases of renovations that they did. Like, yeah, because there is a lot of new electric, it, newer. I'll yeah, say. newer. Yeah, for sure. Like on the second floor. This room was disgusting. And now it looks great. Good size. But yeah, two vinyl windows already. It's awesome. Yeah. And then what's cool is we're going to be able to, so our, our bedroom is right there. So what's nice is that obviously we're going to, even though this is an interior wall, we're still going to insulate it with some noise barrier and then, you know, do sheetrock. So it will help also just for like two tenants living in the same building, help with noise reduction, which will be nice. Why would you want to noise reduce the two bedrooms? Everyone knows this is the baby making <laughs> <house>. <laughs> Dude, this, this closet is massive. I know, well, it, you could tell, it, it used to just be this. Yeah. You could tell by the framing that it, this used to be the original closet and then they opened it up, which is so crazy that like, no one had clothes. I feel like you could make that, one. you could make that a powder room. You could. It's your master bedroom's bathroom. <laughs> and I don't even think they touched upstairs yet. Yeah, no, they didn't even touch it yet. Wait, this is like perfect for a bathroom. I know, but we're not doing that. The rental, Kyle. All right, all right. But it looks pretty cool. So after we chose our contractor, you guys had so many questions about like how we went about vetting, how we went about finding, and I'm going to just dive into all of it. You know how we ended up finding him and the process we made. Uh, what contract? Like, yeah. did we sign a contract? How did we go about like just formalizing and legalizing everything? So. So. I will go about how we found it. I'll explain all that. And then actually Lauren will be able to explain all the after finding, so the contractual things. Paperwork. Paperwork. Fun stuff. So one of the things I suggested was to drive your area or market that you're gonna have your project in and just look for contractors, roofers, siders, anything. So I'm gonna do a quick spin through my neighborhood and let's just see how many we get. So that didn't take long. I literally wrapped around the block and we hit two trucks. Let's keep going. Dumpster, great sign. And they have signboard advertising out front. Awesome. So I literally drove around for not even two minutes. And now I've got, I don't know, four or five contacts that I can call. I mean, it's just that easy and set those meetings up, property walkthroughs, get some quotes, and there you are. Now, the ones that you don't use, remember, keep those names because you may need emergency calls and you've already had conversations with them. You've had a face-to-face. -face, that's how you build a portfolio of emergency, uh, emergency contacts and contracts you can hit up in the future. 
So many of you have asked us to share how we went about finding, vetting, and working with contractors. So let's just dive into how you can go about finding potential GCs. First way to head to your local construction office and ask them for a list of contractors who have pulled permits in your area. They're not gonna be able to recommend anybody specifically, but they should be able to give you a list. Another option is to drive your project area. Stop and chat with every work truck and yard sign you see, even if it's just a roofer. Don't be afraid to strike up conversations. A lot of these guys know each other and you can find some great contacts that way. If it's just a yard sign, go knock on the door, let them know that you're gonna be starting a project and you're looking for a contractor. What was their experience like with that contractor? Now you've got a reference before you've actually even called the company. A third great option is your local investor meetup. This is why we absolutely love investor groups. You can find so many contacts that way and most of the time they're gonna be local to your area. Another way we've gotten contractors info is from subcontractors recommendation. Have you had like a plumber or a roofer or an electrician come to do work on your house? Ask them if they know any contractors that work in your area and I can guarantee that they do. And a final way is to ask your neighbors. You'll find someone who's had work done on their home and also a great way to meet your neighbors. Win-win. We had five contractors walk the new project next door using the tips above and ultimately ended up going with one we found from driving our area. I saw his truck parked in a Wawa parking lot. So for you that are not from the Jersey area, Wawa is like a cooler 7-Eleven. I pulled in and set up surveillance. When the guy came out, I just sparked up a conversation with him. And he happened to also be an investor, which we also love to hear. Super fancy, high-end finishes and additions are not the name of the game. And having a contractor that really understands that is such a benefit. He checked a lot of the boxes for us, being fully licensed and insured. He had a large social media presence, which is like a digital resume. And he was responsive to calls and texts. After scheduling a walkthrough, he was prompt with a fully itemized quote, which believe it or not, is like pulling teeth sometimes with contractors. He was able to begin work immediately. He shared that he was in the middle of another project, but his crew was big enough to do our project as well, which is a great sign that he's able to time manage multiple projects at once. Once we decided to go with him, the next step was a written contract. We talked to him and eventually sent him over ours. In that contract, it laid out a one thirds payment schedule. If you don't have a contract, you can get one from your real estate attorney, which is actually what we did. So if you actually want that contract, you can find it as a free template in Landlord Law School, which is an online course that teaches you how to protect your portfolio as you grow. We sent him that contract on DocuSign on Monday, got him the one thirds payment and demo began on Tuesday. Since then, the walls are out. We've met a few times to iron out HVAC and electrical plans. He's really been a breath of fresh air for us and I really attribute that current situation to the vetting process that we instituted on this project. Which brings me to our ever popular question, how do you vet? What questions should you be asking a contractor? Well, keeping true to Rentals to Wealth style, we're gonna share with you our questions when vetting any contract. These are in no particular order, so let's just dive in. The first on the list is how long have they been in business? Have they always been under their current name or has it changed? And how many times has it changed? This could suggest complaints due to poor work. A poor business will change names frequently to avoid bad reviews online. How many other jobs are you doing now? You wanna know that your project is gonna be a priority to them because time is money. Will they take care of permits and scheduling inspections? Honestly, let the contractor take care of them. There's drawings and stamps that your construction office is gonna require, and it's just so much easier to let them deal with it. Another great question is how do you take payment? We definitely don't want to pay in cash or through Venmo. Our contractor sends his invoices through QuickBooks, which we absolutely love. Have they worked in your town before and how long ago? Every town's construction code official's office is different. And knowing what your town requires is super important. For example, some towns, depending on the amount of work that you're gonna be doing, are gonna require addition of hardwired smoke detectors. You wanna know this before you sheetrock and cause this massive delay. Make sure you also ask them about references. Don't just take that list and move on. Actually call them and see what their experience was like. Are you working on any current jobs now? Go see those in person. Regardless of your experience level, you're gonna know if something looks good or it doesn't look good. Do you have a crew of subs? How long have you worked with those subs? And do you use the same subs all the time? Subs are gonna do jobs like framing, plumbing, HVAC, electric, carpentry. You really wanna hear that they work with the same subs constantly. 
This is to provide you some sort of comfort knowing that the contractor believes that those subs are reliable and do decent work. What's a typical workday look like? What time do you start and what time do you normally stop? We really like to see a crew that's gonna show up early in the morning and are gonna leave at the end of a normal work day. We don't like to see big chunks of time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they don't show up and then they show up Thursday. A constant steady work schedule is really what we like to see. Probably one of the most important questions on the list is are you licensed and insured in this state? You want them to be licensed and insured. You don't wanna hear that they're not, but they have someone who stamps their work. Definitely also discuss projected timeline for completion and when are they available to start. Will they guarantee or warranty any of their work and for how long? One year is good, but two years is best. Additionally, the contract should also contain details on who should seek permits and who's overseeing site inspections. You don't want to go into business without a signed contract. We're talking large amounts of money, changing hands, and I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of contractors pulling the old vanishing act. Will your quote be itemized? You really want to see where your money's going and not a quote that just says, renovation, $80,000. It sounds really funny, but we've definitely seen it. How often will you be on site? You really hope to hear daily, but a few times a week is fine. An absent project manager is really a recipe for disaster. Will they provide a written lien waiver at the end of the project? A lien waiver is a legal document that verifies you have paid the general contractor and all of the subcontractors for the work that was done. It waives the signer's right to file a lien on your property for any funds unpaid. This will be laid out in the contract, but you want to ask them about the payment schedule. We're doing one thirds payment structure, which is pretty common, and that's what we're doing next door. Who's buying what? Materials wise, whether it be finishing products or construction material. The way that we like to structure it is the contractor buys all the construction material, and Lauren and I are going to buy all the finishings, flooring, cabinets, etc. And last but certainly not least, we like to ask about cleanliness of their job sites. A huge pet peeve of mine. Obviously, this is lowering the risk for workplace injuries, but also, if you're working with a private lender, a lot of times they want to come see the properties. So, well, not bringing them into a place covered in plaster and lath is definitely better. So that's it. Those are the questions that Lauren and I really commonly ask any contractor that we're vetting out. But I would really like to know, like, of that list, is there anything that I missed that you ask or like to ask? I would love to know, so definitely comment below and let us know. Hi guys, missed you. Let's finish this video up. Like, subscribe, comment below. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.